Well, hello, and welcome to Gymresm. We're here with a little basic ACF tutorial. We're basically going to go through the ACF basics. So let me just go to an area I want to go to. Here we go. So this is our building area. Um, I believe we're going to just just going to show you the basic ropes of ACF and what to do and you know a little bit how it works in general. Nothing advanced. And what's the reason we do this? Well, that's because my basic ACF tutorials are super old and they're also a bit outdated. Because nowadays, as uh, the previous uh, episode you've probably seen, uh, I showed you how to get ACF um, 3. So ACF 3 is the new thing. Um, I just updated it, but it's apparently out of date, but never mind. Uh, they did an update. <laughs> Not a big one though, but whatever. So basically, uh, ACF 3 has some new items and some new requirements. Uh, like for example, you can see the caliber here. It's like a slider. <laughs> you can have any caliber. You, can, you, you don't need to select between some different types of guns. It's more like a smooth type of slider. Uh, for the engines, it's still kind of the same. Um, you have multi-fuel ones and regular petrol ones. Uh, you got you can select from different type of engines basically. So gas turbines and stuff like that. Just like ACF2. One thing that changed a little bit is that you have to have fuel tanks for the engines to work nowadays. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, another thing that changed, I think, is that the uh, uh, automatic gearboxes, which is now included into just regular ACF, uh, they are a lot simpler, simpler to use and simpler to set up. There are some sensors and stuff like that. Uh, I think this might be from um, ACF missiles, which we'll go through some other time. Uh, yeah. Nothing advanced like that, but there are some different stuff here. We're just gonna do some basic tutorials to cover the basic things. So, uh, to get going, uh, I'm just gonna show you how to build a basic uh, advanced... <laughs> a basic not advanced armored car. Because I'm thinking that can be a very easy thing to kind of set up and have. So. Let's just let's just build the world's most simple armored car. <laughs> just like that. Uh, we're gonna have some basic... We're, we're just gonna build a super basic thing, so yeah. If you're wondering what build tools I have, uh, I got a video about that I made so long ago. Uh, you, can, you can check that out if you want to. Just gonna parent these here. In any case, I got the Fuscan build mode. This is GB uh, trans. What is it? GB quick menu? GB something? GB radial menu, it's called. Um, I did some videos about that per earlier, so do check that out. Uh, what I used to build this was tile build. Uh, if you want to build some basic stuff, it's super easy. Anyways, uh, ACF3 it is. So, how does it work? Well, we need to set up some basic parts here. Um, I'm thinking we're just going to do something really simple. Yeah, I, we're, we're gonna make a very simple suspension, I think. Not that we need that, but I think it can be a little bit funny. I, I wanna see how this suspension works nowadays. If I can... How well it works, yeah, basically like that, so yeah. Anyways, while this isn't a car tutorial... <laughs> I just realized I'm just gonna show you some basic things. So axis center, I'm gonna use. Uh, I don't know if this will work very well, but I'm going to put an axis using axis center here, just so that we can make it turn like this. And I'm going to do a simple weld suspension. I'm thinking. So I'm gonna have a really small prop, uh, and we're gonna serial serial weld it a little bit here. I don't know. This might not be the best thing to do but I'm thinking 
we're going to try that out a long time since I built something like this. So we're going to have a little cube here. And what I basically want to do is I want to weld this thing to the base. And then I'm going to weld this like suspension things to this one. And I want to make sure that this thing is pretty light, which it already is. And that will make sure that it will work. Now this is 400. This is 50. I'm pretty sure we need to have probably this is not going to be the most efficient racing car, by the way. I build my stuff in weird ways. Um, this since these are parented, I believe they already should have changed their weight. Now let's see here if parenting tool has set weight. Oh, it didn't have set weight. Okay, now I changed the weight so the frame is light. It doesn't need to be heavy. It will in any case, I made a basic suspension here. What we need to do now is we need to get some wheels and we need to move the wheels using a precision, precision tool. Uh, so you need a lot of tools to build in an easy and pain-free way, but I guess you should probably get that. Also, um, as props, of course. So I selected this wheel size here. There is a lot of wheel sizes, but what we basically can do with the uh, precision tool is really nice. We're gonna freeze all of this in place so they stand like straight. Um, then we're just gonna use our precision tool and we can uh, use the smart snap I have there too. And we can move it precisely exactly where it needs to be. Of course, the placement of the wheel needs to be pretty precise so in the case like this it can be pretty decent to use a precision tool and what we can do here is we should be able to push it oh lords to push it downwards like this uh, if we just lock onto the mill and push it downwards hopefully it will stay like straight enough like that we can, by the way, uh, undo the push, pushes like that. Put it down like there, like that. And you set the push and pull distance so it can be precisely right. And I'm thinking this is pretty nice. So now perhaps we should push it inwards a little bit. Now that doesn't look good. So this is good. You can undo and redo the like movements. Uh, yeah, I, I think this will be perfectly fine. So we're gonna use axis center to the thing here so we can have a um, suspension going on there. Uh, now, I just realized that, of course, the front wheels here, they can't be, uh, uh, they can't be accessed. So I'm just gonna reload and undo that because what I want is ball socket center because of course we're gonna have some steering on this thing. Now I realize uh, we haven't touched on ACF really much yet but I do feel that this is also the basics uh, of building ACF things since you need access center and stuff like that to be able to make your tanks, armored cars, uh, racing cars and whatever. So yeah. Now we're also gonna do some no collides on stuff that should not collide with stuff. So these should not collide with anything. Let's check my parenting tool just a little bit. We forgot to set it to be no collide. So we're gonna no collide anything on this frame and this frame too. This one too. Now I want the base plate to be uh, collision because otherwise you can't um, like NPCs or other players will just go through your vehicle. So I manually um, no collide the wheels to the base plate there. So it should be fine, right? Now, when building stuff like this, it's really important that you take your advanced copy tool, do an area copy, and just save the thing as whatever here. So you can kind of keep, you know, keep it in mind, right? Okay, so here we got it so far. Um, we need some expression 2 stuff for steering. Uh, we need some basic uh, wiring stuff here. So we're gonna have a little computer area here. We need an advanced port controller. We need a, let's see, arithmetic, arithmetic, arithmetic. 
and we need a multiply. <clears throat> We're gonna slap down a multiply here. Then we need a constant value, and some of, one of these values needs to be 100. Then we need a share of some kind. Uh, so let's just use the our boat seat for basics. We're just gonna put it here very temporarily, going to temporarily weld it in place, uh, do with a port controller and connect it up. Let's see here, where are you? Port controller, connect it up to this one, so we're linked. We're gonna take our wiring tool and we of course are going to a is going to B to W. This is gonna be throttle. Uh, and the B value should be to 100 so that we are going to times 100 basically. Times value, one times 100, works fine. So we can connect up throttle to this thing there basically. Uh, now we need some E2 things. Uh, you can of course skip this part if you're not really looking for this. Uh, but if you are, <laughs> you're welcome. Is car steering? I, I got a page on gymodism.com where you can go to downloads. And on downloads, uh, there is a paste bin via gymodism.com. There is also some zip files with uh, wire, uh, wire stuff. And uh, you should go there and download this ship if you don't have the set ang or the east car steering you can use any of them uh, you can get them there very easily uh, yes also you should build towards north uh, sometimes it, it matters a lot for where, some ships you set up by the way uh, i realized i didn't really check that so yeah uh, any case this is the east car steering uh, Entity chassis, you know, I think I think I'm gonna go with a regular setting actually. Sorry for changing that. They're very similar. East car steering is a little bit nicer in terms of it's more realistic-ish. So let's see here. Setting car steering right there. And here we got it. A goes to A, D goes to D. If the steering is reversed because you messed up th something, well, then you will just reverse that. Um, <laughs> A and D can be reversed and it works, yeah. Right, now we need to slave these wheels to this thing. Oh, I realized that chassis, in this case, I believe it needs to be uh, this particular item. It depends a little bit, but it aligns, uh, it sets the way it should align, so it might depend a little bit. We'll, we'll see, we'll see. What works best? All right, just gonna s freeze it there. Uh, so we need a slaver setting now. A slaver setting is very easy to set up. You go to ball socket advanced, and then we have uh, force limit zero, torque limit zero, of course, and all the frictions down to zero. So the slaver setting goes like this, minimum negative 0 0.05, maximum 0 0.05. And that's for all of them, Y, X, Z, but not for Y. I think it's not for Y. So what we basically do is we click on a thing we want controlled and we attach it to this thing click on the other thing we want controlled and attach it to this thing. And what we basically do now, now is we just area copy this thing. And if we get into this seat here, we should see that, yeah, the turning works like it should. And uh, it seems that my slaver settings were all fine. Uh, and you will notice that the wheels might jank a little bit here and there. That's why we try it on the on the thing there like by the way. So what we do now is we go with another slaver setting and we, we, do, we do the same setting 
will just attach it once more uh, on the other side and it usually works. I do think I remember it was that we just did and now it should be probably working. And if you think it sounds like I'm a tiny bit rusty, that's because I haven't built a car in a year. I want to build more cars. I just haven't. Look at that. Our our, stu <laughs> our stupid suspension is... Yeah, we'll see if we'll keep this suspension. But we do have a suspension now, so that's pretty cool. So, <clears throat> now we're going through some basic building. Which is all fun and games, I suppose. Uh, we have some wonky suspension because this is not in the middle and the weight distribution is not perfect, I believe. But in any case... Uh, one thing that's worth noting is that these wheels can be pretty heavy. These are not too heavy. Uh, we need to put something called... By the way, I think it's time we do a backup. So we're just gonna resave this thing. And it's time to go to Make Spherical Tool. And Make Spherical, just the or original settings on this, uh, makes your wheels actual spheres. And you should only do that when their steering and everything is set up, because otherwise uh, you'll have problems. Also make sure there are no collided and stuff, otherwise you'll have more problems. Uh, then we also have, uh, let's see our physical properties. Yay. Now let's see if I remember this. So go to your console, it's uh, F10. Oh my god, I remembered. So it's physprop underscore material jeep tire. Insert that in the console, resume game, and we're gonna apply this to all of the wheels. This will make the wheels have better grip. You're welcome. Right, so I realize we are still haven't really dived into the ACF part of things. I don't know why. Uh, I just I just like myself a V8 today. So we're gonna have a uh, let's go with a nine liter petrol V8. That's probably too large but whatever we're gonna add that so here we have the engine very beautiful we're now going to hold shift and click uh, left mouse and we get a fuel tank but we want a little larger fuel tank because when we have no fuel uh, it won't work and they come they come in such weird like sizes i don't know Size one container, okay, size two containers. How about this now? It's hit or miss. I think this is a uh, great, it should probably work. So we right clicked on the engine and right click on this thing. That means they're linked. Uh, and we're going to, for unknown reasons, I'm going to place the fuel tank in the front here together with the engine because engines usually go in the front and that has to do with weight distribution and stuff like that but it depends a lot on different cars of course yes uh, and the really weird thing with uh, ACF3 engines uh, I believe we can parent everything now everything that's not guns can be parented so instead of doing that, we need to make sure we don't set weight. We can disable collisions. Uh, oh, I did select no collide, whatever. Uh, that was the previous thing. You know I no collided the frame. Uh, I did disable collisions before, so it was fine. Anyways, I marked these two and I will now, right now right click on this little uh, multiply gate so that they are connected up. Uh, activate goes to pod controller activate throttle goes to the throttle gate uh, Activate the fuel tank basically turn on the fuel tank. It can always be online so we can put it to on or We can put it on just activate on the uh, Pod controller doesn't really matter much does it? Anyways, no, I don't know. Okay I'm gonna put it to one beautiful so now we have that working. Uh, now we need something that's called a gearbox. And the gearbox are really cool. Uh, so if we go to the ACF menu, we go to gearboxes and uh, 
we're gonna make it real simple for us. There are different types of gearboxes. It's like automatic gearbox and there is regular gearboxes. I've used the regular gearboxes a lot, but for driving simplicity, we can do uh, five speed automatic. And they will, uh, they will work pretty well here. So uh, let's see our red line. We got that and we got the power band. So we can see that uh, upshift RPM is, uh, is uh, 5,000, which is under our, uh, uh, like it's when our power band, our RPM has spun up to uh, the upper limit. It's 5,000 there. And you can see on the engine's power band here, uh, it's also ish 5,000, 5,500. And that usually is a good limit to have it on. So it depends a little bit on the engine. And then you can calculate the wheel diameter and stuff like that. We can also mess with the final arrive and stuff instead. But anyways, um, we should now go down and select, let's select five speed automatic, uh, auto inline large. We can have the transaxial. The smalls are usually fine. Transaxial small is usually fine for most applications that involve uh, small vehicles like this. So um, we can set it up here uh, if we want to. We can click calculate and we get some other limits uh, based on the shift point generator thing. You can set this up manually, by the way, otherwise. Anyways, uh, we're gonna do back wheel drive. So we're gonna, we're gonna take this small little thing here. We're gonna put it approximately between the wheels. This thing obviously, or actually it can be parented to the main gate uh, because our suspension isn't gonna uh, switch that, uh, spin around that much. So we can just take this little thing and parent it to this main gate here where we use, we use for building. We don't connect up anything to it. Then we take our ACF tool, just right click on the wheel, right click on this one, on the gearbox and on the wheel. Then we're gonna right click on the engine and we're gonna go down here and right click on the gearbox. And now you can see we have this little uh, power connection rope rod thing going on there. So yeah, um, you have a reverse gear too. Uh, so you probably want to have gear up and stuff here. Most people have it on uh, mouse one. So let's see here, gear down goes to mouse two then. We can change this later too. Then we also have brakes and stuff. So uh, there is brakes in the gearbox, which we can use. Um, and, and, you know, brakes work, they do work, but I like weld clutch brakes more. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the wheel here and we're gonna have this thing. And then we're gonna have a, thank you, controller. We're gonna have this wheel, we're gonna have this thing here and we're gonna have a controller. And they're gonna be welded so we need to connect activate to space and activate to space. So then they are not welded. Um, so basically when we go in here and we press space, we will, we will weld the back wheels. So they're gonna be real strong brakes, real fun. And to not stop the engines, we're also going to connect clutch to the same key space. So we're connecting clutch when we connecting brakes automatically. Yeah, I don't know if this is gonna work now, but this has uh, been some basics. So we're gonna spawn this thing here. And here we can see, we're trying to move forwards and backwards and we don't seem to have, now we are neutral. And I wonder, it seems that we have some issues with the ball socket or something here. D 
deactivated. Well, looks like the no collides weren't working quite. Sometimes you can smash the vehicle in place and try to see if the no collides will start working. Uh, sometimes you can't. Let's see here. Seems that my welds, my strange suspension might have not been the best ever. You can see it collides, it ish collides here. So we're just gonna do no collide on the wheels temporarily to see if we make it work. Because one thing with no collides is that sometimes they won't work. Oh man. Now we have some real strange behavior here. I wonder if we un... Oh yes, we un... We accidentally disconnected. This type of suspension goes in the bin, but it's fun to try. All right. Just adding some no collide things between these. They shouldn't be needed because we already have uh, no collide to anything, but well. All right. So here we have a car. We can see that the gear ratio isn't really exactly right. And it should it should switch gears automatically dependent on speed. And I can see that we need to redo some constraints for the front wheels here probably because you can see they spin around like that. And that's uh, th they're not supposed to do that. All right. But you can see we have we have a working car. Like this is not a car tutorial per se, I will say. It's just some basic buildings. Um, but yeah. Let's see here. We have backwards gear we can switch up to, which is nice. And that seems to be much better. <laughs> now we're stuck. Well, in any case, we have a working car. I'm just gonna, we're just gonna redo some stuff here. Now this can be a little bit different. These can easily be reversed. Um, these might not end up working very well, I will already say. But we can have some temporary ones like that in the front, maybe it works. So in any case, uh, if you want to update the gearbox like that, you'll need to go uh, and select the same gearbox as before. Uh, and then you can select some different values of uh, shifting up the gears. So up shift one speed, we can see the different kilometers per hour going on here. And you can see our final drive, perhaps uh, it can be tweaked with a little bit, we can turn the final drive down if we feel that we have bad power. And if you're going backwards, you'll need to set the final drive to a negative value to make that work. Well, in any case, um, now the other thing we needed to fix, that's the wheels here. So we're gonna, we're gonna click, um, we're gonna remove the ball sockets from this one. Set ball socket center to this thing, ball socket center to this thing. And then we're gonna do the slaver settings again. So here we have the slavers, but the Y is free. Uh, if Y doesn't work as free, you're probably building in another direction and then you need to set it as something else. Right, so I'm trying two new ones and I suppose if I take them from different like angles, it might work better that we get some more different types of connection points, most likely. Right, if the engine kind of sounds like it's not spinning up properly, decrease the final drive furth further. And we probably also want to have some couple of displays and stuff like that. It's, it's some regular wire mod stuff, you know. 
uh, and war mod is now included in Garry's mod for some interesting, strange reason. In any case, uh, we want the speedometer. I don't know why it's called that. So we can just put down a speedometer here. We want some wire displays too. Uh, so let's see her. Where are you? I found them. Visuals, screens and screen. So this one goes to the favorites. <laughs> that's for sure. And there are some cool, cool different... Oh my god, can you use these now? I totally missed you can use these as displays. That's so cool. All right, uh, uncheck only one value so we can have two values here. Uh, we can have gear and kilometers per hour. Um, you can see we can have fit in two values here. You can select whichever one you want. Oh my god, that's tiny, that's so cool. Uh, this is my favorite. I totally missed they added a lot more, but whatever. So, I'm gonna put a little reader here. We can parent this thing there. We can wire gear to current gear. And we can wire B, which is kilometers per hour, to kilometers per hour. Very nice. Uh, I did redo the ball socket slavers. I just added a bunch more. Um, so I went from this to this and this to this in like uh, three different angles each. Um, I think it works. Uh, if it doesn't, you'll have to ask someone wiser than me if, if you even can do that. It should work. Anyways, uh, I decreased my ratio a little bit. And now it gears up real quickly. <laughs> yeah, this is a bad setup. Okay. I still didn't exactly solve my I need to check what's happening with my wheels. I don't remember. Is it, is it some weight distribution issue? Who knows? The suspension doesn't seem to be... It seems to be very hard. In any case, if we, we can gear up to gear 6 automatically. I like that. So we're having an automatic gearbox, but of course, uh, this is nice. I'm starting to wonder if I want to have a, uh, like, if I want to have a manual gearbox instead. I'm so unused with automatics. But it's cool, it works. We have a working car, ladies and gentlemen. If you, if you were here to learn how to build a basic car, well, um, except the wheel issue, I, I've got you covered. I found the Jack Pooty tutorial from 2016. It's like, <laughs> he's from Denmark, I think. Anyways, uh, he doesn't make, he's J Chris Budum slash Jack Pood. He's real cool if you want to see some really cool things. Uh, he hasn't uploaded in like two years. Uh, I don't know. He doesn't do videos anymore, but he has a video on how to counter wheel spas, just so you know. All right. Thanks to Jack Pood, I think I found the issue. So we're removing the ball uh, sockets uh, here. I think the ball socket center also gets removed, so we're gonna reapply that. And what we're basically doing is we're going here and we take the slaver settings with DY free, of course. Um, now, in his tutorial, X is free, so if you're building to the pos to like the proper rotation, it's probable it should be X for you. Um, it depends a little bit. So, in any case, we are applying. Um, we're gonna apply the setting to the wheels, like this. And we can do it in two areas to be safe. And then we should do like this. So you see the value here with minimum. This one becomes a positive, like that. So, th so the minimum becomes a positive and the maximum becomes a negative and the minimum here becomes a positive and the maximum here becomes a negative so uh, then I'm gonna take these settings and I'm gonna take the wheels to this thing and the wheels to this thing 
Now the other thing we want to do is we're going to check weights. If you check, if you change the weights on ACF stuff, they will stop work, just so you know. But basically, this is now 400 in weight. It's too much. Set it to like something that's lighter than the engine, but still, you know. Let's try 200. And the wheels are probably a little bit too heavy too. So they're 90, let's make them 70 instead. And this suspension there, let's change it back to 50. It might work. So if we got a little lighter vehicle, there is uh, the, the forces on the vehicle is less hardcore. Uh, and we might get rid of wheel spas then. Look at that, they haven't been spassing yet. Which makes me very happy. So wheels are uh, now working. The gear ratio isn't quite right yet, but whatever. So yeah, that that's how to remove the wheel spas. Um, weird, weird solutions, so now you know that too. In any case, uh, there is of course more parts of ACF. Uh, and we have engines and fuel and gears and stuff like that. And I think we looked enough at them. Now, okay, my armored car might not be the absolutely best here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I feel it's a little bit too little power when we go from the smaller gears. So I think that the first gear's gear ratio is gonna be a bit lower, so 0 0.06. Uh, and it can shift up to gear 2 only after reaching some... Yeah, I don't know. We can change this a little bit, I suppose. Whatever. We'll solve that a little bit later. I don't like to play around with gearboxes too much. It's boring. So I'm probably gonna switch back to a manual gearbox. You can do that too. Uh, but you need, or need to switch with the different stuff here. But we're just gonna move on so we actually get anything done here. And we're gonna select some different uh, weapons here so you can see how the weapons work. And the weapons in ACF, they basically destroy uh, other props and stuff like that. So then you also need armor, by the way. And there are some cool different things here. Uh, we're gonna go with some basic stuff here. We're gonna have fixed guns, um, setting up turrets that are controlled via uh, mouse aim and stuff like that. Uh, I did some dedicated tutorials about that. There is several. I would recommend my ACF tank tutorial I made some two years ago or something. Because in that I go through how to make a really good gun and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I haven't played around with too many guns lately, so I'm just gonna show you the basics. So what do we have here? We have auto cannons, uh, auto loaded cannons, regular cannons. Yeah. Which is manually loaded. Isn't that quite nice? Uh, so. Oh, here you can see this entity can be fully parented. That's cool. Uh, so it seems that a lot... Okay, so a lot of the guns can be parented now too. That's super cool. Uh, I thought they could not. But in any case, let's, let's select a cannon or something. Okay, alright, we're gonna do a little combo here. We're gonna have a fixed short barrel cannon. So let's have a 80-ish millimeters caliber here for this short cannon. Uh, then we can select a different round. We're gonna do with uh, armor piercing high explosive. And then we can see projectile length. Decides how long it will be, how much mass and stuff. Uh, and how much crate mass will be. And then we have propellant length. So you can balance this out. And then we have filler ratio. So, uh, let's have a decently high filler ratio there. You can see the stats down here, how much penetration we have and not. And what not. So, if we have only filler, we have very little penetration. And if we have, let's 60 millimeter penetrate that, it's probably fine. We can see the stats here for the, this ammo that we're designing. Uh, so, it's much easier now since we have them on the same menu. So, we just spawn the gun here. And it can be parented. Uh, and then we do a, uh, let's see here, we uh, hold shift to spawn an ammo crate. And in this ammo crate, 
we have. Let's see how many shots we have here. Well, we're gonna link it to the gun here at least. And it has zero rounds, and that's because it's too small to fit the rounds. So we actually need to... Uh, let's see here. Oh, look there. So we can see... Now you can see the red box inside of there. If it's too little, they can't fit. So you can see, perfect fit. 25 shots, link it to that one. And it's the same thing here. Um, let's see here. If set to a non-zero value, it will allow weapons to use rounds from this ammo crate. Well, we only have one ammo for this, so we're gonna set it to one. You can make a controller and stuff. And we're gonna set up to fire on, I don't know, R, because why not? And then we can mount this gun somewhere here, together with the ammo box. And the ammo box, it can be pretty far away, by the way, but it needs to be on the vehicle and ish in the close vicinity because otherwise it won't work. Now we can have parent, make sure that we don't disable weight, that we, that we don't set weight because that will cause issues. These should be able to be parented, so we parent them to a gate here. And that's very nice. So if we take and make a little copy of our vehicle, we can put it down here. Thank you. And we click R, you can see we reloaded there. Ah, we're, we're able to fire again so we can shoot. Look at that, isn't that quite nice? Uh, you can have rangers and stuff you wanna have uh, aims too. If you wanna aim properly, you can do that. Cool, so now we got that. We got the gun, very beautiful. And you can't change the weight of guns. If you do that, you won't be able to shoot. So, uh, let's do another gun here, just for the fun of it. And I changed my mind, we're gonna do a, uh, we're gonna do a little mouse aim turret, because there is a really simple way to do him now. Uh, for this one we can use parented. So, this is a gimbal, beautiful. We are going to use this to make a little mouse aimed uh, machine gun, actually. And this mouse aimed machine gun will be, uh, I don't know, thunder, yay. So we're gonna, we're gonna have it, I don't know, here maybe. And for this we need the ball socket center, so slap that on the base there. And uh, now we need the wire tool here, so on will go to active. And uh, let's see, our direction will go to aim position vector. Beautiful. I believe we can go and do a little gate on this thing now. Probably in the back here. Let's see if that works first. So we're gonna make a little copy there. We're gonna unfreeze it. We're gonna see if we can It will spass out when you look at something that doesn't exist, by the way. But, yeah. Hello? Sorry, I messed up. So, you want to, not direction, target. Select target to aim position. And if you do that, you can see, now we can aim towards, you can't aim against itself because then it will be weird. But like this, very beautiful. And it's a, uh, you need to have it as a ball socket, of course, where you need it. All right, now we have some lightning here too. If, uh, if you wondered what happened, by the way, with wire mod, um, click R to unwire something. So then we can select target instead. we will go down here to aim position, right. All right, so we go back to the ACF menu. Yeah, if you wonder why it just disappeared, it's probably because uh, my computer got sniped by the lightning. But uh, that ha that doesn't happen too often, so. All right, uh, let's have a small machine gun, so a caliber 10, because people have that. Uh, you can see here, by the way, how fast the shell will be. You can drag it up and down on the length. You can make him faster or slower. You can see the different values there. 
penetration. We can penetrate up to 20 millimeters of armor, maybe. I think that's fine. Okay, spawn that deer. Spawn a little ammo box. This is a load of shells. Let's make this smaller. This is like 900 shells. That will be enough. Look at that. Here we can see the sizes of them inside. Well, in any case, I think that will be a fine size. It's really not good to have the ammo in the front here where it will get hit. I guess this is an armored car that will not meet enemy fire much. Because it, if it will, it will be really sad. And we can then mount this turret on this thing here. And we go then go to parent tool, make sure that set weight is not enabled. And we're just gonna parent this to this gate here. And uh, we're gonna parent this thing to this thing. And we're gonna have it load all the time. And we're gonna set this thing to shoot at, I don't know, what have we not used? Alternative key. <laughs> there we go. Slap that down there. And there are different types of ammo and they have all different usage scenarios and stuff like that. So now, you can see. Oh, now I don't know what. Now I don't know what's happening. All right. All right. Interesting forcers. Is it a gimbal? Something is a little bit wonky with a gimbal, I believe. Like, it ish works, but it's like really weird when it comes to... It affects our steering. I think it's a weird connection point in the air. I don't know, it's really weird. Right, so um, I sometimes feel that having suspensions on the front wheel is sometimes a mess and makes things more difficult. So I'm actually going to remove this axle here, which means that the ball socket centers will be going directly to the base plate like that. And this wiring here goes to the chassis like that. Uh, it didn't seem to be the gimbal necessarily which caused the issues. Uh, I changed some weight, so it's now 250 and 70 on these and 100 for the suspension part there. And we're gonna see if it still also has problems with uh, collisions or not. Oh, now we can see that the direction of the chassis turned out a little bit weird. So in any case, uh, what we need to do, we need to actually remake this thing here. Um, the issue was that when we change the base part like that, we need to go to expression 2 now again and select the uh, set ang. So when, when we select uh, and change the, uh, the chassis entity, uh, we cause all sorts of problems. So we can't change it like that. I, I had forgotten it. Uh, and I'm not 100% certain the ball socket will work very well when we are going to high speeds. Um, there are other ways to do turrets too. There are proper E2 ships, which I would recommend instead. You should probably check them out, yeah. So in any case, what we're going to do here is I think we're actually going to increase it to 0 0.1 because I remember one person told me before that 0 0.1 was a better value than 0 0.05. Uh, because it was too small or something like that in any case So here we have it. Uh, I'm, I'm building in this direction. So it's still y-axis that needs to be like this and we're going to I Think it actually con creates different connection points So we're going to do three different from three different angles like this and then what we have here Minimum goes like that. Maximum goes to negative. Minimum goes like that. And maximum goes to negative. So we're gonna follow Jack Puddy's tips here. And we'll go from the wheel to this and the wheel. 
to this. Beautiful. So, um, I did some stuff there. Um, we can go back to this one here. So, uh, basically, I just wanted to show a little other thing about the guns that I want to show. And also, about the steering. It's a little bit extreme in the angles, so we can change this to 30 degrees instead. So, should be like this, right? And... We'll just go out of there. No, we need to, sorry. So, 30, right in 30. Upload and exit. So if we go in there, that should be fine. Now about these guns, you can right click them and there are um, body groups. So here we can see we got some different muscle break options if you want that. And the same thing, I moved this gun here by the way. But there are different types of barrels here you can use. So you can just right click and customize them a little bit so you can get the gun you want. But in any case, uh, I did change some weights here. So we're back to that there. And if you turn with a less extreme angle, it can usually be less like you, you, you'll have uh, spassing wheels since the angle you're jumping in is less acute. Uh, I did it so that the gun also turns on, uh, shoots and aims at the same time. Because I don't know if I'm making stuff up, but I do feel that we get some lag weird things sometimes when the gimbal is online. So I changed it so that when we're not actually aiming with the gun, it's not active. So that won't affect it. So it only affects it when it's like this, but yeah. It doesn't seem... It's like weird. Sometimes the gimbal seems to cause issues, sometimes not. One thing I also did with the gimbal is that I made the gimbal thing a lot lighter too. Since it's parented anyways, it doesn't need to be heavy like that. Fun fact, the back wheel does have... It's, it's just pivoting on this axis here. It's just very unlikely to get upside down. But it could get uh, upside down, so that's something you should keep in mind. I do believe we should actually provide uh, our suspension with a tiny little bit of elastic. So we got elastics here. Ooh, we got something called elastic suspension. I don't know if this is, this is probably a mod, isn't it? So elasticity to 50,000 and dampening to 3,000. That's probably something I used before. So I probably knew what I were doing then. I'm just gonna add an elastic there. That's probably all we need. And if we spawn this new vehicle here... Let me just check if we go up here. Ew, I did forget one part with this elastic. Uh, when we are making elastic suspension... Let's see here where it is. It needs to be not only, not stretch only. It's ne it needs to be going both ways. There we go. So, a rigid type. Right, <clears throat> spawning it there, just shaking it here. Now you can see it's having some type of uh, elasticity, doesn't it? Very nice. Probably uh, adds to something. Now we messed up that connection. By the way, you probably want to save your vehicle also from time to time, don't forget that. Because you might be real sad if you make something. Yeah, well, um, we've been going through some stuff here. I don't know, this is an armored car weird making tutorial. We have a really bad mouse aim turret and stuff like that. We got the fixed gun and the only thing we're actually missing now, that is some armor together with a better setup of, uh, of the gearbox. Uh, it's really hard to accelerate in this thing here, man. So yeah, uh, let's let's check that out a little bit. So uh, here we have it. Actually, we're going to we're going to spawn a new iteration so we can feel fresh. And we're gonna start to look into armor. By the way, inside this uh, about the add-on, you can see you got the add-on here, and we got the online wiki. We got to contact us. They got the Discord. I know. We got some client-side settings so you can set. Uh, 
stuff like client side volume, stuff like that. And then we have general settings like classic sandbox and competitive. So dependent on what you kind of are doing, uh, you can change them to stuff like that. Uh, so that stuff won't deal damage unnecessarily and such things. About those customization things I mentioned before, uh, you can do that, hold C and for engines too, you can select filters and stuff if you want that on your engines, by the way. All right, so let's get, let's get into some armor here. Uh, armor in ACF3 is pretty basic, it's very simple. Armor properties is the only thing you need there. And uh, the thing with armor in ACF3 is that it, it's like you either have, th you have thickness and you have docility, and that's like it, basically. Yeah, so in any case, uh, in ACE there are a lot of different types of armor, but that's not the case in the, this thing here, so you don't need to bother with that too much. Now, what we need to do here is we should go and put some armor plates. So to do that, I think we're just gonna select we're just gonna select some plates here, and I imagine we want to we want to protect the sides here a little bit. We won't fully armor this thing. I just want to put some blocks here to kind of show you how it works. No, that's that's wrong. Thank you. And one more. Like that. I think that will be enough armor for now. So we go to uh, parent tool and uh, remove constraints, disable collisions. All fine. We'll just we'll just uh, mark them down and put them there. Then we can go to the uh, armor properties, and we can see that after we have applied this, it will weigh 26 kilos. Very very um, small. So how thick is the armor? I don't know, like 20 millimeters. We probably won't to be able to uh, beat incoming small projectiles. So that will make it that this has a mass of 500 kilos per plate. So I'm gonna make it a little less. Uh, have I, I'm I'm gonna give it less health points. So uh, decreasing the docility to make it a little bit more light. Now in, uh, and I'm gonna make the other armor plates this value too. And this weight, since they are parented, are going to be kind of ish uh, imaginary slash equally distributed. And it will, uh, when you parent something, it doesn't really have weight anymore in a way. So the thing is that the weight of these armor plates will be calculated and will make our engine kind of go slower. So that's how that works. And when something shoots at this armor plate that has less than a penetrative capability of 22, 20 millimeters, uh, it should not go through very often uh, until, of course, the health of this plate is uh, depleted. So a big gun like this, uh, which is, of course, going to go through, um, it's, it's pretty strong. If you look at the ammo here, we can see that it penetrates 60 millimeter. So an armor that's thin as this won't ever go through, like will always go through. If this has, uh, if this big gun has a, a penetration, a max penetration of 60 millimeters, and we only have 20 millimeters of armor, of course it's just gonna melt through. So you have to armor dependent on what vehicle you have. You should of course hide your ammo boxes in the back where they don't get hit as easily. There are a lot of rules for official ACF tournament stuff and stuff like that. For example, by the way, for un under vehicles, there is armored combat framework. We have a standard driver pod and we have a pilot seat. These are usually required when it comes to many ACF uh, three battles. The, 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 you can't use any uh, seat B and they have some reasons for doing that. So just follow the rules if they have those rules. In any case, and uh, that's because you can make yourself invincible with some seats uh, if you parent them in the right way and stuff. Well, in any case, that's basically that about armor. Uh, there is an uh, ACF cutting torch you can uh, like cut up armor and uh, heal armor, but that's mostly for in-game battles. 
Uh, it is of course under weapons. So it's we're gonna go through those a little bit later, the regular guns. And never mind, it's actually under other. Here we can see ACF cutting torch. So here we can kind of uh, you can see the stats here. And if I right click this, you see I actually decrease the health and stuff. And it's dealing the same type of damage as if it was a gun, a ACF gun. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, well, anyways, the more armor you have, the heavier they will be and the slower they will go to, stuff like that. Um, thing is that with ACF, uh, under 20 tons is considered light. I don't know, it's just how it is. But now you can see the armor is attached like this and even though... Even though it may seem that we have parented it and... I wonder actually, I think perhaps regular guns go through. So if I just try and shoot this. Now regular guns still stop them. Anyways, good. So uh, basically what I wanted to test here, we're just gonna get in our very sad armored car. And you can see that we did some damage there. And why did we do damage there? Well, we shot the ammo boxes, so uh, all these props are now actually killed and will despawn. And it's of course not smart to remove stuff without saving, just saying. A little bit more there. Okay. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe now. Look at that. And it just goes th through, I believe. There we go. Perfect hit, maybe. Oh, and the brakes work too, you can see. They're welded shut. And the clutch comes in there. It's a great way to get some starting speed. When we have really heavy armored vehicles, then it will be a little bit slower, of course. And do keep in mind that when you're close by a detonation like this, your vehicle also blows up. So that can be uh, smart to note that you will get damaged by other people's uh, stuff too. So now we can spawn this. This this worked. So we can twiddle a little bit with this thing. Uh, fix the gear ratio. Uh, maybe add some suspension. That's not super crap. And of course cover this in armor. Uh, if you want to have proper turrets that mouse tamed and stuff. Um, I don't know. It's, it's of course if you're into doing battle things. You of course need to get into that. I do have tutorials about that too, so which you can go and check out. Um, so if you want some type of turret control, there are turrets like this one here. It had, but yeah. It requires some other setup, uh, like a cam controller is usually used and stuff like that. It, it's not that hard, really. You can check that out. I already made that tutorial, so I don't think I'll cover it here again, because this is just a general ACF tutorial to get to know the guns and the armor and stuff like that. Uh, one thing I do want to show, of course, that is if we jump down here, I want to see if the armor protects any. So you can see here, you can see they are even rico ricocheting away a little bit there. If we shoot here, oh, <laughs> we should have ran away there because <laughs> our wheels got blown away. Uh, so stuff that has a little armor only gets blown away. So by the way, that's another little quick tip. Um, the armor for wheels is probably very low. So what you can do is to decrease the HP a little bit, but still give them some armor. So yeah, whatever. That's something you have to play around with. But um, since this armor is 20 millimeter, and this uh, projectile 
has a max penetration of 20.21 millimeters, it means that the, these shells from this machine gun goes through the armor a lot of the time, but not always. It's like an approximate calculation. So, you know, if you have like 100 millimeters of armor, a 20 millimeter armor piercing gun will like, to my knowledge, never go through. Yeah, but in any case, I guess that's that. Just some basic ACF tutorial. I hope I didn't uh, confuse you more than I taught you. Um, can easily happen sometimes. It's, it's like an armored car tutorial, actually, whatever. Um, but that's how it is. And uh, by the way, if you are going to armor your vehicle completely so that the passengers get armor and stuff so you can have mouse same turrets, you need a, a cam controller anyways. So a cam controller, yeah, go watch my ACF tank tutorial instead. It, it's pretty decent too. You know what? I hope this was a good little update and understanding of how ACF3 works in its basic. And if it was, do leave a like and do stay tuned for future videos. This is your host, Jimmy Dism, and we are signing up until next time. But before that, I will say huge thanks to all our supporters. Admiral, Super Dave, Captain Y, Commander Jacob, Lieutenants Asteria C2, Cravey, Parvagri, Tyler Ross and Vincent Veritas. Thanks a lot for supporting the channel and thanks for watching.